All right, I've got 6.30, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and get things started. Um, before I do, would all of you just uh, in the uh, window there, there's a place where you can wave to me with uh, the little icon. Just let me know that you're hearing me okay. You should be able to see me on the screen, and you should be able to see a slide that says photo AI and some images. So, okay, great. Looks like everybody's uh, everybody's waving to indicate that they're seeing me good. I always like to make sure of that since we're doing a webinar, it's kind of hard to know. Um, so uh, just a few things before we start. So this is recorded and I will send you a recording uh, in the slides that I have here um, with a few links and some things like that. I'll share that with you within about 24 hours after uh, the event tonight. Um, and for the purposes of Q&A tonight, if you would, there's a Q&A feature in, uh, in Zoom and if you would use that to post your questions rather than the chat, it's a little easier for me to manage questions that way. And so we'll I'll stop periodically and man, we can answer, you know, do my best to answer any questions that that you have. Um, so I do still see a few people still uh, trickling in. So I see a lot of familiar names. And so thanks. Thanks, guys, for being here. Um, and I do want to give a little shout out uh, to my friend Sharon. Uh, I don't know if you're if she's on tonight, but she just had emergency surgery and she's doing okay. But uh, just wanted to uh, wish her well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, what I want to talk about tonight is this new tool from uh, from Topaz called Photo AI. And uh, just by a show of hands, if you would. How many of you are currently using some Topaz tool right now? I'm just seeing, oh, I'm seeing a whole bunch of hands pop up. So that's good. But there's still a lot of people who are, are, not, uh, are not involved with it. So, so that's good because um, this new tool is one that kind of takes, it, it incorporates uh, the technology from some of the other tools that they've produced uh, in the past. But I find it to be a really just a great shortcut um, and a kind of a one-stop shop for doing a bunch of things. So um, what I want to do tonight, so so Topaz Photo AI, it's this new project and it, it uses the technology from other tools uh, that Topaz makes like Gigapixel AI, Sharpen AI, and Denoise AI. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Topaz, you know, Gigapixel AI is a, it's a, its own tool uh, and its and sole purpose is to increase the resolution or enlarge images. So we we use that for uh, taking a, a small image and making it bigger if we want to print, for example. Um, sharpen AI is going to use different models to help sharpen our images. If there's lens blur or motion blur, it can really, um, it can save an image that might otherwise not, not be usable. And then Denoise AI is their uh, software for removing noise from your images. So often if you shoot at night or a low light uh, and you have a high ISO, generally along with that comes noise. And Denoise is made to eliminate that. Well, so what is Photo AI? Photo AI is, is a new tool and it, it in, kind of integrates those three technologies into one tool. Now, each of the, each of the separate applications, Gigapixel, Sharpen, and Denoise, are going to be a little bit more powerful. They're going to have more models available within them. They're going to have some more uh, features that you can fine-tune images and so on. So there may be some images where you would want to use um, those independent uh, tools. But in Photo AI, what it does is kind of combines all three of those things into one app. It really speeds up your processing, um, and I've been using it now for several weeks, and it's just really cool. And it works for most of the images um, that I'm using. Um, it can be used as a standalone, which is how I use it, but you can also plug it in to Photoshop or Lightroom. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the use of it through those tools tonight, uh, but the interface itself and the functionality of the tool um, works pretty much the same. Uh, as a standalone. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, so what, what are we going to use it for? As I mentioned, um, to, to eliminate noise. Um, 
to eliminate blur. So if you have motion blur from maybe hand holding a shot or lens blur, um, the photo AI is going to identify that and recommend how much uh, sharpening to do. And then it's really great for low resolution images. And those can come from a variety of sources. Many of us use uh, mobile uh, phones these days. I use an iPhone, have for years, and I love my iPhone. And I, uh, I do a lot of photography with it, but the sensor in the iPhone <laughs> is so small relative to our big cameras that the most we're gonna get out of that is about a 12 megapixel image in most cases. Now, the 14 is changing that a little bit. So we're gonna have a 48 megapixel image with the 14, but generally the iPhone images are smaller. We also might have a small image, uh, low resolution image. If we take a big camera image that's of adequate resolution, but we crop into just a, a smaller segment of that image. Um, and then the other um, thing that I've been using it for are these, I don't know if any of you are, have caught the, the bug with this or not, but these new tools that allow us to generate images from artificial intelligence or using artificial intelligence, they call them text to image AI generators. Um, some of them for the iPhone that I've been using are, are Wombo, uh, Dream for Wombo uh, and um, Wonder. There are others, but those are the two that I've used the most. And they're really fun. They're really interesting. They create some just incredible imagery. But the files that those pieces of software produce are usually 250 kilobytes. They're very tiny files. So you can't really do a lot with them other than share them on social media or something. You're not going to print them more than about five by seven with integrity. So I've been using Photo AI uh, for all of these uh, purposes. So just a word about the pricing on this. And before I started, most of you know, I've been using Topaz software for seven years, I think. And I am a, an affiliate with them, which means uh, if you purchase the software using my discount codes and all that, I earn a small commission. So I just want to be upfront about that. Um, and the pricing on this one, there's how it works. Many of you already indicated that you have Topaz software. If you already have what they call the image quality bundle, which includes uh, gigapixel, sharpen, and denoise AI, you may very well be eligible to get this for free. You, used, you have to have your license up to date. So if you haven't updated your license uh, for, the, for the, new seat or the new year, um, you may need to do that, but you can get photo AI uh, for free for a year with all the updates. And then there'll be a license renewal at the end of the year. Um, if you own one or two, maybe AI, Gigapixel AI, or Denoise AI, but not all three, the price will be prorated based on what you already own. So it'll be reduced if you own one or two of those tools. The regular price for this software is going to be at $199. The sale price right now through October 7 is $159. And if you use this link and the code get photo AI, the cost for you will be $135.15. So I uh, just want you to be aware of that. The sale ends um, October 7, and I'll send all this to you so you'll have this with a, a link in the slides if you choose to do that. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say here? I think that's everything just kind of along the lines of uh, uh, the, the pricing and so on. I do want to show you, it can be a little confusing how this works. So I do want to show you, um, I'm going to log open up the um, Topaz interface here. And what you wanna do is go out to the Topaz site and log into your account and go over to where it says my products. When you click on that, when you click on that there, it'll show you all the things that you currently own. And you should see something here that says photo, uh, Topaz Photo AI and a download link. And if you have these other tools already, that download uh, will be, will be free for you. Um, so I wanted you to see where to go for that. If I log out, and I'm doing this just for the purpose of demonstration here, you wanna be logged in when you do it. But if I go out to all the products, you'll see that this is the, the new tool right here. Um, and you can see it's on sale, $40 off, blah, blah, blah. When, if you're ready to purchase it, you would click here and it takes you out to this page and it shows you, you, you get two seats for the price of the software. And this is the discount sale price right now. So I have a laptop and a desktop and I have I can run it on both of those machines for, the, for that price. 
don't forget to put the promo code in here. So what you're going to do is click on that and then type in uh, 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 get. Oh, and I've already typed it in uh, once. So I'm just going to click it, get photo AI and click OK. And you'll notice it generates and calculates another 15% off. So this is your price. So all of this gets taken care of at the time of purchase, but I wanted you to see how it works because it can be kind of kind of confusing um, on how to do that. So let's go ahead. Let me think here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. And what I want to do is uh, pull up Photo AI. Now, the, the icon looks like this. You can see it down here at the bottom of my screen. Uh, it's kind of a little... I don't know, jewel, or uh, I guess, kind of a purple jewel, kind of cool icon. And I've, I've launched this, the, the tool already. I'm going to go ahead and ex expand this so we can see the whole thing. And what I want to do is start by bringing in an image. And you can bring in images to this interface in a couple of different ways. You notice it says you can drop images. So you can drag and drop them. I have another monitor up and I have a folder of files that we're going to use tonight. So I'm just going to drag and drop them. But you can also browse to the images. So if you click here, you'll see it, your, your file structure. You can navigate to anywhere those um, the files that you want to work with reside. You select them and you say open and it puts them right in. Now I'm going to cancel that. Um, so it makes it very easy to, to, to put the uh, files in there. And I'm going to start, I want to show you a couple things here. Here is an image. Let me minimize this a minute. Um, this is an image that I made. Oop, wrong one. I want to show you that in just a second. I'll leave it up. That's okay. Here is the image. This is a photograph. Well, I can't do both of them at once. I got to close that. So this is an image that I made in the Palouse this spring. So many of you know, uh, some of you online were with us, with us in the Palouse this spring. We had a great trip out there. Fantastic barn on a beautiful day. This is a Fuji camera image. Um, if we look at the resolution for this image, um, open that up, get the info here. Um, here's the uh, the resolution. You can see it's a 30 megabyte file. So it's a pretty good size file. And the resolution of it is down here. Where is it? Right here. Uh, 4,000 by 3,000. So it's about a 12 megapixel image. So it could be printed, you know, fairly decent size, but it's still not huge. But what I've done, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. What I've done is crop in on the barn. So I've really, really cropped in. And if we, if we look at, get that out of here, let's look at the metadata for the cropped barn. And where'd it go? Where'd my barn go? Well, that's, come on. There it is. So if we look at the metadata for this image, um, it's only 721 kilobytes. So by cropping in on that larger file, I've reduced this um, file size down here to about a, a megapixel and a half really small. We're not going to do anything with this image that's going to allow us to print it or do anything. But look what happens. I'm going to now just drag this file and I'm just going to drag it over here right into the interface. Come on. Why is it not doing that? Don't you just love how stuff kind of screws up when you go to demo? Um, Okay, try that one more time. There we go. Well, it's still not letting me drag and drop. I don't know. I must be doing something weird. So I'll go ahead and browse to it. It's out here in my download folder. And let me look at the icon so I can see it. And it's this image right here. Um, let's see. There we go. So this is the image um, and we've now got it in photo AI and it's already starting to render the image. And um, you can see 
on this panel over here, there's this little section right here called autopilot. And what it's done, it's already done re rendering it. It's detected a subject and it's recommended that we uh, increase the resolution by 2.7 because it, it's identified it as a very small file and it's removing some high image noise. So you can see here, it's using the autopilot settings. So down below, the only thing we see here is that it's affecting the, no, it's recommending some noise reduction. And if we click on this and open, you can see that it's recommending a normal model and about 50% or 46% reduction of the noise there. And it didn't recommend any sharpening for this image. There are no faces in this image to recover, um, but it has enlarged it by 2.7. So I could go ahead and, and just use these settings that it recommended, but you can always override those and you can also increase it even more than the, the recommended 2.7. Down here, I can upscale the, re, the image by two, four, or even a maximum, I think it's six times. So just let's go back and keep looking at this for a second. You'll notice it says it detected a subject. Well, if I mouse over where it says subject, oh, it didn't really do it. Something's acting really funny right here. Um, didn't do a very good job of identifying the subject. It usually, when I did this earlier and have done it a lot, it's done a great job of identifying the subject. So I don't know what's going on. Um, but it, it generally picks up the barn perfectly, which it's not doing for me right now. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with being on Zoom and all the stuff that I have open. But um, what's happening down here, if we look, it, it's updated the preview. You can see the, the progress bar shows up down here and it's finished. And if we use the slider here, I have it set to show a before and after view. And you can set those by choosing down here. If I slide the slider, there's before <clears throat> the... Um, the process ran, you can see how soft and blurry it is. And there's after, I mean, it's cleaned it up considerably um, and it's um, sh both sharp, a little bit sharper and it's removed noise from it. And what I'm gonna do down here is increase it by four times. So if I click on four um, and move this a little bit, you can see it's rendering again. And it's showing us that the original was about 1400 by just over a thousand pixels. So about a, a one and a half megapixels. And over here, it's up to uh, 5,900, almost 600 by 4,044 pixels. Um, so what would that be? Is that, I think that's 23, about 23 megapixels pixels. So if you multiply those two, you get the size. So we've gone from a really, really small file up to uh, a much larger file that we could print. And we can look as I slide, there's before and there's after. It's really cleaned the image up and it's going to allow us to print that really large. A um, couple other things here. You, you can view this as a single image and you can choose different sizes here. You'll notice up here in the a uh, little window on the right, you can move around here to see different parts of the image that way. Um, anytime you move the image at all, just like in any of the other gigapixel or uh, sharpen or denoise, it, if you move the image or resize the image in the frame, it has to uh, re-render. So right now we're looking at one of the views, which is a single image view. If I click on the image, it shows before, and after, or I can come down here to this little eyeball and show the original or the before and after that way. The other views that you have, um, there is a side-by-side -side view. So um, this is before on the left and it's still rendering here, but you'll see this is after on the right. There it is. You can see how much sharper and cleaner. And then you also have a split view, which is my favorite, which allows you to move the slider back and forth and you see uh, how your image um, 
how your image looks. So we've taken this really small image and with very quickly, it's assessed everything. It's made a recommendation for us and it's um, ready. We're ready to save the image. We, we uh, went with the uh, recommendations it made with the exception of increasing it by four times. So when you're ready to save, then you're going to go down and hit save image and you get this dialog box. Um, you'll notice over here on the right, you can add a prefix. I've added one here called photo AI demo and a suffix. The suffix is going to be the, um, the software that we're using, which is photo AI. And you can turn on add applied filters to the file name. So when I do that, if you look at the file name here, here's our prefix photo AI, there's the name of our file. And then here's, here are the applied filters. It used the photo AI denoise and enhance. If we turn it off here, notice those things are no, no longer uh, suffixes to the file name. So it's nice, I think, nice to know what was done to the file. And that's one of the ways that you can uh, determine that or make it so you can see that. Um, you can then save it to the original folder or you can navigate out to wherever you want to go, browse uh, through your uh, fo folder structure and put the image wherever you want. I'm going to leave it in the original folder. And there we go. And you can also um, save it out as a JPEG, PNG, or a TIFF, or DNG. Now, you can only save it as a DNG if it came in as a raw file. Um, and then you can save it out as one as well. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG. And you want to make sure your quality is at 100% if you want the full quality of the image, which I think most of the time we do. And then you're ready to go. I'm going to click Save. And it begins to process here. And it's going to save it back uh, to the uh, folder that it came from in this case. How fast this goes is going to totally depend on what you have under the hood of your uh of your computer. Um, and that's it. It's already finished. I can close this window and it, it still thinks we're working. So it's going to keep going. So if I want to uh, take this out, I can go up here to file and choose close image, or I can come down here where there's uh, the, this little three dots, this ellipsis here, click on that. And I can say, close that image. And there it's gone. Um, Let's see, I see a couple questions. Um, so Terry's asking about uh, Wonder and Dream. Terry, I'm not gonna go too much into those AI tools, uh, Wonder AI uh, generators or Dream. I'm doing another webinar exclusively on these new tools uh, for generating uh, text to image uh, creations on Tuesday, um, but I really didn't intend to go too far into that. We'll be comparing those um, in that workshop on Tuesday. Uh, and then let's see, Sandy's asking, does it also work as a plugin from Lightroom and Photoshop? And yes, it does. Uh, Sandy, you can uh, use it that way if that's what you like. Uh, can you export an image from Lightroom or Photoshop into Topaz Photo AI? Well, I'm not sure I understand your question, Georgette. You can have the software run as a plugin to Photoshop or uh, Lightroom and have it uh, just run from that. If you have processed an image in Lightroom or Photoshop and save it out to your uh, to a location, you can always move that into uh, Photo AI. Um, and then uh, Jane is asking, hi, Jane, uh, is there a way to zoom in out while you're working on the image? Let me see if I can answer that um, as we open up another image here, Jane. I think um, let's pick a different one here. Um, here's one. Um, I'm going to drag and drop. All right. What's going on here? I'm going to close this up. For some reason, it's not allowing me to drag and drop, and that's just not the way it works. So I'm going to try and relaunch it and see if I can correct that. So let me grab this, drag and drop. There it goes. Something funky. Now it's working. So I just dragged and dropped this image. This is our, our Motley crew from uh, our June uh, photo workshop in the Palouse. And what's happening, this is, a, this is an iPhone image, a JPEG image. 
Um, and it's already beginning to down here, you can see it's beginning to render. And because there are faces in here, it's recovering the faces. So it's identified seven faces in here. Actually, there's eight. So I think this person right here, her face isn't facing the uh, the, the camera. So it, she's not identified as a face, but it's identifying all these others. If I see if I mouse over where it says faces, you can see the boxes over the faces, it's identified, but Louise is uh, not facing the camera, so she's not recognized by the software. Um, the other thing is, again, if I come over here and mouse over subject, and this is what wasn't working on that last image, when you mouse over the subject, it's showing me that it's detected the subject of our image. Now, it also picked up a little spot down at the very bottom of the screen. Um, one of the things you can do is go into where it says refine, if you click on refine, you can come down here and change the sensitivity. So if we if we increase the sensitivity, it's going to pick up a lot more. That's way too much. But if I bring the sensitivity back where it was, um, it was picking up this little shadow down here. But if I drop the sensitivity down, you can see how I can kind of adjust it until it just gets the subject, which is the bus. Excuse me, the bus. Now, if you're doing this in one of the other tools like Sharpen AI, they have a masking tool that has a brush that lets you refine with a brush. Photo, uh, Photo AI does not have that level of uh, detail, um, but you can change the softness of the edge here. So if I increase the softness, you can see it's giving us a softer edge uh, around that subject. So you do have a little bit of control about how it works with that uh, selected subject. So I've made a few changes there. I'm gonna say done. And so here's what it's telling me. Um, it's identified those, those recovering those seven faces. It's, um, and it's removing high luminance noise. So you can see here, this has been turned on. And if I open this up, it's taken out that it's recommending about 47% for, for that. It's also recovering faces and it's actually, re, it's got it way high up to a hundred. So that must mean, again, this is an iPhone image, uh, relatively lower resolution than a big camera. So it feels it need to um, take that strength up high. Um, it only, it didn't recommend an enlargement. It's already a 12 megapixel image. But let's say we wanted to make this, we wanted to print this really big. You know, I mean, we're talking like maybe, I don't know, 60 on the long side or bigger. Well, I can come down here and I can choose to enlarge it. So I'm going to say, let's enlarge this by four times. So I click that. Now you notice it blew it up bigger than I want it to be because I want us to be able to see it. So I'm going to drop this size down here and maybe, well, why is it doing that? Let's go down to fit. Um, maybe a little bit more than fit because I like to see what's going on. So let's try 33%. So there we go. That's a little bit. Now we can see those faces. So we're going to enlarge this from 12 megapixels up to, and I think this is, if I if you multiply those two together, I think that's about 48 megapixels, 16,000 by 12,000. I think that's right, but uh, I'm not good at math in my head. So I'm not going to promise that, but, but here's, these are megapixels, not megabytes, megapixels. So it's your resolution. Why they don't give you megapixels over here, I don't know. I wish they did, but they don't. Um, so you can choose one, two, four times or six times, or you can actually enter values in here. And if you enter a value for the width, it's going to automatically adjust the height to keep the same <clears throat> ratio, the same proportions of your image. Um, and that's that's it. It's already done. Let's just look at the difference here. As we, uh, you can probably, you can see it a little bit on those faces. Let me enlarge this a little bit so we can see a little closer. And it's got a render again, because I changed the size of it. So you have to wait for that for just a second. Um, and I don't have any, I have an iMac. It's not got any fancy graphics cards or anything. And it does quite well um, with most of this. Uh, it takes a little bit longer because we're on a Zoom call, but uh, it's really pretty quick. Um, and it's, there it's done. Now, if I take my slider, there's, there's before, and look how each face gets a little better as I slide along. It's recovering those faces. You can see, uh, this is me here in the front. 
it's actually, um, it even takes out the stubble of my beard, which may be a little bit more than it should go. If we don't, if we think it's too much um, uh, noise reduction, I can always come over here and drop that down manually just a little bit, have it run again. Because I mean, ideally it wouldn't, it wouldn't take the stubble out of my beard, <laughs> but you can control that a little bit. Um, and it does make this image um, a lot cleaner, but the real kicker is you can print it. It's four times as large as it started out to be. So not only is it larger, but it looks better than it did at its original size. Um, so um, let's see, what was the question that uh, Jane had? Is there a way to zoom in and out while you're working on an image? So, so Jane, there's several ways to zoom. You can go down here to this little area at the bottom and you can choose, you can zoom up to 800% or you can fit it to the screen. Um, you can also just take your uh, finger on your mouse and you can use the roller on your mouse. So I just rolled in on my mouse and I uh, decreased the size. And again, every time you change the size, it's got to re-render uh, what it's doing. Um, and I can then also, I can take my finger and zoom in, whoa, zoom in that way. And you can see up here at the top, you can drag this around to see different parts of the image if you're zoomed way in. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and I, uh, uh, if not, Jane, let me know. Um, and then uh, Georgia is asking, do you work in Topaz Photo AI before post-processing in PS or Lightroom or vice versa? Okay, that's a good question. So I actually have done both, but ideally I like to take my raw files and put them right in here and let them, um, let them be processed here first and then take them into whatever... Um, processing I'm, processor I'm using, whether it's Photoshop or Lightroom, or I like Luminar AI. Um, but that said, I've also taken images that I processed on my iPhone uh, or other areas, other places, and I've taken them in here and enlarged them um, using this. So ideally, I like to take my raw file and put it right in here and have it uh, do this first before I process. Um, okay. So again, um, this is all ready to go. If I want to print it, I'm gonna click or save it. I'm gonna click save. And again, I can modify the prefix and suffix here with the identifiers if I want, and I can put it wherever I want it or back to its original location and um, click save when you're ready to go. I'm gonna cancel that because I don't wanna take the time to save it. And then you notice it still thinks we're working. So it's running it again. To close one of these, you can go up here to the file close image, or you can come down and click on the ellipsis here and just say, close the image. So we're back. And if you try and close an image before you've saved it, it'll remind you, hey, you didn't save this. Are you sure you wanna leave the, uh, the uh, you know, close the image? Um, and then Sandy's saying, every time you change something and it re-renders the picture, is it making it bigger than the first time? Well, no, uh, it's just, when you move the image, it just has to re-render it. It's doing the same, whatever settings you had in that right panel, Sandy, it's just applying those again. It's just when you when you change the size of the image in the frame uh, on screen, you, ha it, you have to re uh, wait for it to re-render. Um, so let me show you another, um, another example here. Um, let's see. Let's look at this one. This is an image that I did. This is a really small image. Um, if I open up the info on this one, um, it's an old iPhone image. And let's see what the resolution is on this. Uh, so it's only 475 kilobytes. Uh, it's this image of a dancer that I took. I'm not sure. I think I was trying to locate this image in my files. And I think I probably didn't find the original image or something. I'm not sure why it's so small, um, but it is. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to grab it and drag it and drop it into the interface. Let me enlarge this so we can see it. And this is the image. And you can see there's there's quite a bit of noise in the image. Now this, this is, to so to your question a minute ago, Georgette, do I, 
do I do this before I process? Well, this image I've already processed. I think I gave it, uh, you can see it's got a, uh, a blurred vignette around the edges. Um, and I've already done stuff to this image. Um, and now I'm, I'm wanting to enlarge it to see if I can possibly um, salvage a print out of this really small file. And you can see, if you look here at the, uh, the text on the piano, you can see just how much noise there is. So what this has done, it's, it's already run autopilot. It's detected the subject. It did a really nice job of identifying the dancer there. Um, it also recovered her face, recognized the face. It didn't, it's telling me it didn't remove any noise, which I find really unusual or, or different because it really does. If you look at what it's done, you can see it's removed quite a bit of noise, but it, for whatever reason, it doesn't show us that here. And I don't know why that would be because you can see, um, I mean, it's really cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, it's recovered her face. Um, Let's just look at this. It did. It does show that it's removing a little bit of noise. Why it didn't? Why it didn't show that? Uh, and part of the original analysis, I don't really know. Um, but if you look at the letters on the piano, you can see you can read the the letters. Wh whereas here, they're just really soft and blurry. Um, again, this is a nine hundred by twelve hundred um, resolution uh, or uh, resolution image which again is probably about a, uh, about a megapixel or a little bit over. And then it's recommending that it enlarge it by 3.3, which would take it up to um, three by three. So maybe what's that nine or 10 megapixels. And what I'm going to do is say, Hey, let's enlarge it. Let's go ahead and enlarge it. Oh, well, let's do four times. And it's going to render again. And doing its thing down here. You can see there it goes, almost done. And there it's done. And let's look, there's before and there's after. Now, because you know what I think this is? I think this is an image that I may have um, uh, copied from my Facebook page. So it was really low resolution. But even that, it's, it's made it so that this image... Um, it's cleaned it up quite a bit. It's probably a little smoother. We've lost some detail in her face and so on, but it's still so much better than what it was here. Um, so you can see how it's how it's improving. Um, so what I want to do, I've just got a couple more things to show you, and then we'll then we'll uh, take a few more questions and call it a night. But I want to show you. I mentioned that I've been doing a lot of these uh, uh, generating images with um, some of these new AI tools. Out of curiosity, I'm really curious to know how many of you, just by show of hands, um, how many of you are are playing with some of these AI generators like Wonder or Dream by Wombo or Mid Journey? Oh yeah, I'm seeing a whole bunch of hands pop up here. A few. Well, so um, if if you're interested in that, join me next week. I'm doing a webinar on Tuesday night, and I'm going to talk about two that I've been using a lot. Um, so these tools, for those who don't know about them, they're 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 tools that that um, they use artificial intelligence. That's been the applications have been trained by looking at zillions of images, so they know what a tree looks like, a cloud looks like, a truck looks like, everything, and when you use prompt words, so you might say, um, show me a boy on the beach. So you put boy on, on the beach, and then you would choose a style that they, they give you maybe 10 different styles to choose from. You choose a style, you click a button, and it generates an image. Now, a lot of times they're terrible, but sometimes they're amazing. And what, what's been really fun with this is that you're know, creating some really cool stuff, but the files are only 300 mega or uh, kilobytes or 250 kilo. They're very, very tiny files. So I've been using this tool to enlarge them and I've been printing them really big. So I want to show you, um, well, I'm just going to grab uh, a couple here. Let's see. Um, here's one right here, drag and drop. This is one that I created and you can see uh, to your question, Georgette, I've already processed this. I actually take these, I took this image into Lightroom on the phone, Lightroom mobile, 
it was very flat. The colors weren't very bright. And I took it into Lightroom and I used the color management tool in Lightroom to bring out these colors and create it, you know, turned it into this. Um, but now I want to make this, um, and I've, I've actually already, I put a signature on it and all that kind of stuff. So um, what I would do is get the one that didn't have a signature on it and I'd bring it in here and it's already run and it's telling me, oh, I've detected the subject, but I don't think it really did because there's, if I mouse over that, it really didn't detect a subject. There's not much, doesn't know what the subject is. That's okay. Um, it's telling me that it's going to remove some noise, high image noise, and it wants to recommend a re uh, increase in resolution by 2.8. Well, I'm going to overrule that and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's make it four times. But first, let's look at this enhanced resolution. You have several diff different models that you can select here. And the one that is really good for these really low res files is the one called low resolution, duh. Um, it really does a nice job. But let's say I want to increase this. You can see it's it's very small, um, about 1.5 megapixels, something like that. And again, I'll go ahead and increase the size of this and let's let it run. And it's doing its thing. And I'm going to pull this over here. There's my slider. And there it's done. And let's look. Look at the difference. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really taking the noise out of that image. Now, in some cases, I think it's too much. I want some of the texture. It's taking the texture. See how it took the texture out of this orb here. Um, I don't know if it'll work, but if I come over here and just turn off noise reduction altogether, and let it run again. Let's see if it leaves some of that texture that I want. So it can't overdo it. Um, that's a little better. So there's a little bit of that texture left. So you can see how you can override the autopilot and come up with something a little different. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, you can do batches of photos with this. So we've got one in there already. Let's, let me grab another couple of these, um, Oh, here's another, um, let's grab this one. And um, let me see, here's, let me get one more. Um, oh, let's get this one right here. So now I've got three, these were all generated with um, artificial intelligence software using prompt words and styles that I selected. So let me just bring these down to size. What I can do, I'm currently working with this image. You can see it's highlighted down here. It's running the model. It's uh, telling me that it's going to enhance the resolution by 2.8, and it's removing some high image noise. And if we look at the difference here, there's before and there's after. Let's increase that so we can see a little more. Um, and it's got a render again. And... And it didn't recommend any sharpening. Of course, there's no faces. But if we look at this, it is it is set to low resolution. And let's take a look here. There's before and there's after. So see how it's really kind of picking up a little bit more detail in the image and so on. So, so that's the first one. Now I can go down here, click on this second one. And it's, all, it's starting to run. Um, it's going to remove some high... Uh, image noise, it's going to recommend an increase of 2.8. Um, I want to increase it more. So I'm going to, let's do four, four times again. And it's doing its thing. And let's just see how this looks. Almost done. So there's before and there's after. Look at how it's just brought that image really uh, really to life. It's taken a lot of the kind of the noise out of it. And now that image is up to uh, 40 by 60. So what's for, it's like 48 megapixels. So that could be printed really large. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to show you one. This is an image. Make sure you can see this. Um, I just printed this this evening. This is a, it was generated with AI. This is on 13 by 19 inch paper. Let me turn it sideways this way. And I don't know if you can see if I get close. I mean, it's 
impeccable. It's really beautiful. And I know this could be printed at least twice the size. I have a printer that prints up to 27 or 22 by uh, 17. And I, I didn't have any big paper. So I, this is the largest paper I have, but that, I mean, that's, it's amazing how good these look when they're printed. Um, so that's our second image. And then the third one um, here, um, it's actually already ready too. So now we've done three images in the, in the same, um, in the same run, if you will. And now it tells me down here, save three images. So I'll click save and it's going to allow me to save each of those. And again, I can add a prefix. Um, I can make sure that I have the filters showing up. So I know what was done uh, to each of these and I can save it out um, to my, uh, wherever I want. Make sure that this slider here doesn't get down from a hundred. I don't know why it would, but you want to make sure that you're saving things at a hundred percent. Let me go ahead and cancel that. And what time are we doing on time? So um, let's take a look at what questions there are. That's really everything I wanted to show you. I mean, I've been using it and I'm really enjoying um, the ease of it. Uh, Let's see. And so let's see, Gary is asking, in the first two examples, the AI did not sharpen. When I select sharpen, it seems to override the auto feature. Can you speak about adding sharpening? So, so Gary, you're exactly right. In, in, if we look at what it told us it's doing on this image right here, it did not recommend sharpening, but you can always override the, the recommendation. You can always turn it on and come down, you can choose whichever lens blur, motion blur. Um, I'm, I'll choose lens blur for this. And then you can increase the sharpening. I'm just going to bring it way up for example's sake. Um, and it's going to run. Now, there's this little button down here that says subject only. Well, because it says it detected a subject. And if you look up here, when I, when I mouse over the subject, it's showing that it didn't really select a subject. It just made a random selection. So I don't see the point of having that on. So I'm gonna turn it off so that it sharpens the whole image. Um, and so there's before and there's after. So it really does do, you know, if I bring, I can even bring the sharpening up even more. Let's see if it starts to get, it may get crunchy because we're overdoing it. But yeah, you can, um, you can override the recommendation. Um, but I do find that they're, the default recommendation is often pretty darn good. So there's before and there's after. So it's really, um, it's taking out the kind of that grit and that noise and it's adding a little um, sharpness to it. And that may, you know, might well be too much, but yeah, you can over, override that. Um, let's see what's uh, next is Carol's asking where the last two image, where the last two images generated by AI. These three that are in here right now, Carol, all of these three were created with um, the app called Wonder, which is a uh, uh, text to image AI generator. Yes. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's, I mean, it's really quite amazing what, uh, what you can create with these tools. Um, let's see, maybe another question. Kim is asking, uh, do you happen to know what size graphics card you have? I have an iMac also, but I'm not sure. If I go, well, let's take a look. I'm not sure myself. Um, if I go up here and grab, let's look about this Mac. And I'll look at my, I don't know if that's the same thing. <clears throat> I've got 32 megabytes installed. Let's see. I'm not sure where to go to, to know what I have. Um, I thought it would tell me here. Here we go. I have um, a Retina display, and then I've got the 4.2 gigahertz quad core Intel Core 17. This is a several year old, like maybe four year old Mac. Um, uh, it's got the Radon Pro 580, eight gigabytes. So it's nothing fancy, um, it, and it's been quite adequate. Um, if you have a question about that, you can go out to, uh, let me see if I can uh, bring this up here real quick. Um, 
And where's the, you can go to Topaz and see if I can find it really quickly here. If you go to, they, they tell you the specs. Um, let me see here. So, uh, count. I don't, I'm not logged in, so I don't know if this will make a difference. Let me log in and see if I go to my products. Oh, uh, let's see. I thought it would hold us right here. Um, I know it. I know there's a place you can find it on here. I just can't put my finger on it, you know, really quickly, Kim. But it 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 will give you tell you the specifications that they recommend minimal uh, minimum ones. And I will tell you this: I have a, a an older um, MacBook Pro that has less than what they recommend and it still works. It doesn't work quite as fast, but it will run even if it's less than what the recommendations, uh, uh, what, you know, what the specified recommendations are. Um, and Sandy's asking, what text did you use on the abstracts? Oh, well, again, we're gonna go into that a lot more detail on Tuesday. Um, I think for the, let's see, for these abstracts here, I like this one, um, I think I used, um, okay, let me think if I can remember. I used uh, bassoon. I put the word in bassoon. Here, let me do it to fit. Uh, bassoon, and I said in the style of, um, oh, what's the artist's name? Uh, Klimt. So, so that's one of the things you can do with this AI software. You can tell it to, you can put in the terms like Picasso or Klimt or whatever. In this case, I used Klimt um, and Bassoon. And this is, and I don't know, maybe something else. And that's what it generated. It never generates the same thing twice, which is kind of fascinating. You can use the same prompt words and the same style selection, and you always get something different. Um, this one... Um, why it's so small. There we go. Fit the screen. This one, I use something like uh, spheres uh, or orbs. I can't remember. And this was Matisse. And so I got a lot of colorful uh, images like that. Um, this one, I think I used um, uh, Ren, Ren, Renoir. So again, I think my prompts for this were something like uh, boat, marsh, at dawn, Renoir. And, you know, that's that's what I got. Um, and again, if you're interested in that, I'm doing a webinar on Tuesday where I'll cover um, a lot of the things about the two apps that I've been using most um, and talk a little. I will mention this software um, because that is one of the ways that I enlarge them for printing. Um, so we'll kind of go over that a little bit. We'll look at all, uh, I have some things like prompt suggestions. So I've learned a little bit about um, different things you can you can include in your prompts that will guide or steer the app toward uh, a result that you, you might want. It's still pretty random. I mean, 90% of what I get is like, whoa, out in left field, where did that come from? Um, and a lot of just, you know, crazy stuff that's not useful. But then again, sometimes you get you get something like this, which, I mean, I think that's really cool. Uh, it, it, anyway, so if you're interested in that, um, it's going to be on Tuesday. It's uh, you can sign up for it. I, I'm charging ten bucks for it, so um, you know it's not going to break the bank. But uh, we'll go into quite a bit on how to do stuff with that. Uh, Georgette's asking, um, so with text to image, do you start with any image that you have taken or just text? Well, that's a good question. So again, we'll cover that on Tuesday, but there are uh, the two apps that I use for iPhone are Wonder and Dream by Wombo. Wonder does not allow you to add an image. Uh, Dream by Wombo does. You can choose one of your own images and put it into the uh into the tool and you can say, I want my image to influence the outcome a little, a medium amount or a lot. Um, 
And so you can then, that way you can take one of your own images and apply different effects to it. Wonder works exclusively off of prompts. Um, so again, if you're interested in that, join, join us on Tuesday. Um, are you using Wonder on your phone or computer? So Phil, the, uh, the two that I've been using are both uh, phone based and I think they run on uh, iPads too. Um, but there is desktop software. It's much more powerful. There's, there are two that I'm familiar with. One is called Dolly 2. And the other is um, Mid Journey. Those are the two I know. There are still others. They're much more sophisticated. They allow you to do far more. They're much more powerful. They're more expensive, and they have a steeper learning curve. So I'm I'm playing with Mid Journey. Um, I just haven't taken the time to really invest in in learning it yet. But I may. Uh, I'm having so much fun with Wonder um, that I might uh, give give it a, give it a try. So. Um, all right, guys. Well, um, we're we're at the end of about an hour here. I'm I'm uh, I'm happy to stay on if you have any other questions or if you want to email me this stuff. I'm happy to talk about this. Um, I'm going to send you a link to this video and a link to my slides that has the the codes and stuff if you choose to uh, to purchase this. And for those of you who do, I thank you because, like I said, I earn a small commission when you use the code, uh, my code that I give you, and um, I thank you for that. Um, and maybe I'll see you on Tuesday and we'll talk a little bit more about some of this AI stuff. So um, let's see, I do see a couple of thank yous. Great. Well, hi, Larry. Nice to see you here. Thanks, Jane. And so thanks, you guys, for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. And um, keep in touch. Let me know what you're doing with this stuff. And uh, if you have questions, uh, by all means, um, get in touch. And then until next time, keep on creating. Good night.